Is that a dog toy? No, it looked like no. you had like a, a bonio thing. It's a leap cooking. <laughs> it's Christmas well, time, John. Yeah, I've already started doing Christmas shopping. It's early for me. Are you like the kind of like the guy that does it on the way back from the pub on Christmas Eve goes into the no, shop? No, more, more so because I'm just bored. <laughs> I have stuff to do. This is Sheer Isolation. It's presented by Kieran Moore in Trowbridge and John Ponting in Cricklade. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day you're listening to us. Welcome to another edition of Sheer Isolation. Myself, John, here in uh, Cricklade. Kieran's over there in Trowbridge. How are we doing, Kieran? Very good, thank you, John. How are you? I feel all right. We seem to have had some nice positive news over the last week or so, which uh, which is good to hear. I'm glad some someone time. is. I'm having a terrible week. Oh, why are you having a terrible week? It's because you've got oh, to start it's... working. You've got to start planning to get back to work, huh? Yeah, all of that kind of stuff. Actually, John, I was just thinking a minute ago about lockdown hair. Because you know, right at the beginning of the podcast, we grew, our hair grew and grew and grew. But I was just walking through the door tonight and my wife has said to me, gosh, your hair's getting long. And I'm just sort of looking at it and it's quite long, isn't it? It is, yeah. It, it is. It's not quite at the stage it was in the first lockdown, but yeah, it is. No. Long. It's kind of looking like that boy from um, End of the Fucking World. He, the boy in that, he had like basically the same hair as me now. So I don't know. My wife really likes that program. So maybe I'm just styling it on him. Who knows? I seem to remember when, when you had your hair long, you said you were going to grow it out and you didn't. No, I, I wimped out, didn't I? Chickened out. Mm-hmm. Chickened out. <laughs> For people who are new to us, some purpose of this show is to promote and encourage the local music scene, just to let you know that the musicians are still out there. Not just musicians, but quite a lot of uh, different aspects of the entertainment industry. So this week's guest is Mel Kelly from Safe Gigs for Women. And I've had a wonderful relationship with the organisation um, since its inception. Um, so it felt like a great opportunity to get her in to talk. Okay, then well, we'll get straight into a track then, shall we? You have picked a tune, which is, um, I'm not going to pronounce that right, Fonzie Amor? Fonzie Amor, who's a Bath-based uh, musician. Uh, he's, a, he's a soloist, uh, but he's got like a backing band behind him. It's a five-piece. Um, no relation to John Amor, so completely new Amors or Amors. Um, and this is a track called Hella Good. No, Hella Good? Yeah, it is Hella Good, yeah. No, Hella Sweet. Hella Sweet. Hella Sweet. Hella Good. Call me a- Hella Good. <laughs> well I lied oh. hella sweet um, and this is uh, so what it was he um, I'm friends with him on Facebook I've been like he's a musician he's, been, he's lived in Braff and Bristol in the past and he likes to do these rants about the industry and he was ranting about um, a PR company which he pe- spent a lot of money on to promote this record who did or didn't deliver what they promised and he was just calling out the sharks in the media industry you know people that promise to deliver a lot and then don't it cost him lots of money and I could totally sympathize with the situation he found himself in. I understand completely um, when I used to work in PR, you know, the pressures on me to try and to deliver for a play, paying client. So I thought, what can we do? What can I do to help? I said to him, you've one of your tracks, hella sweet, it has a video, I'm going to pick it, I'm going to put it in my podcast and that's my way of looking after you and sort of supporting your endeavor. Um, and it's a really good song, a pop rock song, um, five piece, um, and it's really simply done, just um, there's no big budget, it's all straightforward, but really, really well executed. So here we go, this is hella sweet. Not hella good. But it is hella good. Dance your sorrow. 
So that is Hi. Bonzi Amor. Another tracker, another person I'm completely unfamiliar with. So thank you, Kieran, for introducing me to yet another person. I need to put on my list. We've of done quite a lot of that, haven't we? We've been very good at that. We have Find, unco- finding new people. Yeah, we've had some brilliant local acts um, that, that effectively become the backbone of our local music scene. It's been brilliant. It's time for us to go on to this week's guest, and this week it is Mel Kelly, who is behind Safe Gigs for Women. I think the name really speaks for itself on that, Kieran, but do you want to give a bit of an insight into what she does? Oh, well, she's going to give us the insight into what she does in a minute, but um, it's more a case of why it needed to exist in the first instance. Um, and it's not, being a man, it's not something that really ever cropped up in my mind. And when I, when I discovered the charity existed, um, I believe it was Free Frank Turner, he had done a show which he, he had done and, let, and highlighted the Safety for Women cause. And because we're so heavily involved in that community, um, we, we picked up the cause and we, we went with it too. And we've added, to, added their logo to all of our posters and, and to really outline that all of our gigs are safe spaces for women. They should, should really need, you know, shouldn't really need to be said, but unfortunately it does on occasion. And actually it really worked well for us. Um, we had um, a couple of people, um, a lady, uh, a local lady to me, a, girl, a woman called um, Julie Paget. She came to the gig because it had this, this logo and this phrase on the poster. And we met a whole bunch of people. Um, and another lady called Sue, she came because of, the, of these, um, this logo. And we created this network of people. So I'm gonna, delighted, I'm really looking forward to talking to Mel and finding out what she's got to say. Safe Geeks Women um, is an organization that works to educate people um, about sexual assault at gigs and festivals and also to teach people um, how to be what we call an active bystander. In other words, to be able to safely um, help people who appear to be not having a great time either because um, they're being sexually harassed um, perhaps touched up or, or sexually assaulted or, you know, at festivals, um, perhaps there's, there's going to be a chance that, that they may be raped or, or otherwise um, uh, treated poorly. And so one of the things that we do, and it's been kind of a long journey to get here, it went from, it went from, so Tracy Wise, who I think Karen knows, it went from sort of Tracy's experience at a gig in 2015 when someone touched her inappropriately and it was a gig that she was very excited about, something that she had really looked forward to and it sort of stole her joy um, at having been there. It was, you know, one of those mm-hmm. once in a lifetime kind of gigs that, that, that we go to uh, a 20 year performance of, of an old record or something of that nature. Um, and um so it started with her just getting sort of angry on twitter picking the name safe geeks for women and and essentially going you know hey that's that's not okay um to where we are now where we we work with live nation um we are you know we've been at reading leeds all the major festivals download boomtown 2000 trees we've been from you know sort of the small festivals to the very large ones and now what we do is we work with the festival goers to be active bystanders and to teach them how to, as I said before, sort of safely intervene. The, the very nature of it obviously comes from a really um, sad that it even has to exist, really. I, I've never been to a gig and sexually uh, assaulted a woman ever. That's not in my nature. But the no, f- sure. Know that it happens is really quite sad that it has to exist. And it's sure. in 2015, so it's come a hell of a long way in, in roughly five years, quite a short space of time, really. So we predate the um, Me Too movement, right? Um, and, and that has obviously helped us get some, some traction. Essentially, look, I've been going to gigs. My first gig was in 1982, and I saw Eddie Money at a racetrack in California where I was living at the time. And um, some guy grabbed my bum, and I was 13 years old. So um, I have all of my life, and now I, I will be 52 in about three or four weeks, um, all of my life I have been subjected to all the gigs that I've been to, punk gigs, I've been in pits, you know, um, all that kind of thing. I've been subjected to people who view me as a, as a woman in these gigs in a very 
objectified manner and sort of set my um, my participation in that light, if that makes any sense. So a guy, for example, will get up in the morning and go, great, I'm going to go to a punk gig tonight. I'm going to get pissed and I'm going to get in a, in a pit and I'm in a mosh and it's going to be fantastic. They haven't thought about what they're going to wear, right? So will something slip? Yeah. Will, 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 you know, someone see my chest or my bum or what have you? Um, they haven't thought about who they're going to go with. They haven't thought about what kind of gig it is. So is it a gig where the musician themselves perhaps promotes uh, certain attitudes towards women? Now, I, I'm, I'm going to sort of not have an opinion on that because there are some artists that I like very much who perhaps their attitude towards women is not, you know, the best thing. Um, but I like their music and that's fine. These are all the things that women think about. Women think about, um, okay, so I've been to the gig. I need to get out to the parking lot. Am I safe to like walk that far? Is someone going to try and, and assault me or even not assault me, cat call me, harass me, have something to say about my body or my makeup or the way that I look? Um, all these things are like things that go through men's heads and things that we consider. Guys get up, put the clothes on, go to the gig, do the thing, drink a lot. Don't think about, okay, well, if I drink too much, am I, you know, if something happens to me, will I be able to sort of say no or fight that off? Drink too much, do whatever you do, get, get to whatever transportation you have. Cause if you've been drinking, you shouldn't be driving and then go home. So, so that, yeah. that, ultimately, that ultimately is is effectively the male privilege. Yeah. We, and it's often not thought about. And it, I mean, it's not a phrase that I knew until the last, I don't know, five years probably, when all of these things, all these conversations started to appear. Mm -hmm. And the work that you're doing obviously brings that to the table and that makes people sure. talk about so I'll give you a little story about how I've incorporated Safe Gig for Women in my gigs. I don't want my gigs to, to not be a safe environment for women. And I've never previously thought about sure. what it would be like for a woman coming to one of my shows. And that's because I'm a man. It's the male privilege. I don't think about that. You've, you've just highlighted it. And it's ignorance from me. But upon reading about Safe Gig for Women, I thought... Christ, I've actually, I have a, uh, I have a duty really here to, to, to platform the opportunity for women to come to these things and feel safe. That's absolutely my, 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 my I should be doing that. So I took the logo, I added it to, to every poster we've ever done. I incorporated it onto our website, you know, into all of our socials. As a result of doing that, we had a number of women come to our gigs and they came on their own. No friends. They came to see what it was about, the, the show, but they knew because of that logo that they would be welcome. How do you feel after five years? Do you feel that things have changed? I do feel that things have changed, at least in that the fact that people discuss it now. Whatever their opinion on it, at least they're going to have a chat to you about it, right? So I went to gigs through the 80s and, and early 90s. Uh, my son's 25, so he's born in 95, so I kind of stopped gigs for a while, you know, when he was a baby. But um, so, you know, as, as a young person growing up, I went to a lot of gigs and it was just a thing. It, it wasn't even something that we kind of thought about or discussed even amongst women. It was just a thing, you know somebody's going to touch your bum and somebody's going to grab your boobs and somebody's going to have an opinion about what it is you're wearing. But it was just, it was just the way things were. And I think, and I can't give Tracy sort of enough credit for this, that we, we now sort of post 2015 have now said, Hey, you know, this is a thing. And we do get pushback. Like, let's not be wrong. We, we, we get, we get the, the entire, what about the men's, conversation and and look men are sexually assaulted men are raped um i know of men who have been sexually assaulted at gigs and we do obviously address that but it has sort of come out of the woodwork and people have now said hey listen you know not only is this a thing that has happened to us it's happened to most of the people i know most of the women i know and it's time for it to stop now and i i think that's the major difference sort of before and now is that now 
you know, we can actually say the words and have the discussion whether or not people agree that it's a thing, you know, whether or not people agree that it happens, we can at least sort of go, hey, you know what, it is a thing that happens and it, it is a thing that we want to talk about. And, and I think that's really great. If you want the world to be a better place, you have to go and do it. And in my position as a white straight male, I have to go make that change. I have to make other people feel welcome and, and mm. accept etc because that's not the world i want to live in i don't want to live in the world where people are afraid to do stuff that's crazy yeah absolutely but you know i also have to say that look without our volunteers we we wouldn't it, it would just be us shouting on twitter right we've got some amazing volunteers and this year has been such a disappointment for us because every year we've been able to build on on the on what we had before and we spend a lot of time um towards the end of the year, you know, when gigs sort of slow down over Christmas and they don't really pick up again until February. So we spend that time like going to Scotland and training volunteers in Scotland. And now it hasn't happened. But, but I also have to say, look, we, we recognize that we are also sort of a lot of um, cis white straight women. Um, we do have some uh, uh, gay and lesbian volunteers. We also have some male volunteers. But we would absolutely love and adore to have um, volunteers of colour, um, transgender volunteers, all of that kind of thing. And we would like to also sort of break out of our indie punk, medley kind of place that, that we've been because I think that there are areas of the industry that are still where, where we all were before 2015, where we went you know, it's a thing, but it's not a thing we all talk about. Um, I think that sort of pockets of the music industry are now talking about it, but I don't think all of the music industry is now talking about it. And I think if we had volunteers who were um, into those areas of the industry and could make those introductions to people like yourself, you know, promoters or musicians or what have you, we could sort of spread this word. If people are looking at going to a gig and they see the Safe Gigs for Women logo on, on the posters or on, on the venue sure. door what can people actually expect being in that gig what what, what makes it different to uh, any other gig if it's in a venue that means that venue has contacted us and asked us um who we are and what we're about it means that we will have given them some information about um, what we call active bystanding to sort of teach people how to spot problems and how to safely maybe extract someone who's having having an issue. Um, and it also means that, that people who have our logo somewhere absolutely have shown some interest and care about the safety of, of the people at their gigs, the sexual safety of people at their gigs. So we don't just sort of mail our, our materials out sort of un, unasked right? So it, it means that if you see our logo somewhere, we have actually done some work with that venue to talk to them about who we are, what we do, and the standards we expect them to uphold. Thank you ever so much for talking to us about this. That has been really enlightening. Um, I promise to continue being, uh, doing what I can, platforming everything I possibly can the cause. Um, all of my gigs will always be safe gigs, so I promise you that. Excellent, thank you. Have you picked a track for us this week? We always invite a guest to pick a track. Buck Hunter is an American uh, band Sorry. and the song is called Listen to Your Mum and the reason that I picked it is, um, so I live a long way from my son. He lives in Sydney in Australia and um, the song is about, um, the, the chorus is the man you are is the boy I raised and I think it's really important also in terms of Safe Geek Swimming, in terms of, you know, if you have kids, like talk to them about consent, talk to them about how they should treat people um, that they date, whether that be of the opposite gender or the same gender or no gender, or like whatever. Talk to them about how they should treat their partners um, and how they should treat uh, people that, that they come across because, um, you know, they, they're probably not going to learn about consent and sexual safety in schools. Um, they're probably not going to learn about those things uh, anywhere else, but you can teach them to be really strong and upstanding people. And so, um, yeah, my son sent me a link to this song and I really miss him. And there you go. Yeah. I didn't listen to my mom when she taught me how to clean. 
And my dishes, they're waiting in the sink I didn't listen to my mom telling me to go to sleep Maybe that's why I'm up every night till three Just waiting for sleep and what it brings A break from waiting through my insecurities And I'm awake, unable to shake the little things I didn't listen to my mom when she told me I should share I have trouble telling anyone my fears I'll never be the best at anything, no one will know my name It's a silly thing, but I'm still afraid Of living a life from start to end And then I'm missing, forgotten when I'm dead And now I'm wishing I had heard her when she said when she said, I love you, child, you're my own Damn those standards, you're not those And you're not judged on what you make The man you are is the boy I raise The man you are is the boy I raise I didn't listen to my mom as I sunk below the ground I didn't listen to my mom as I was buried by my doubt I didn't listen to my mom as she tried to dig me out But I am listening now I've heard the words they finally ring And I'm sure my worth isn't balanced on one thing It is earned by learning from the songs my mother sings and she sings, love you, child, you're my own Damn those standards, you're not those And you're not judged on what you make The man you are is the boy I raise I didn't listen to my mom, but that's the thing when you're a kid you don't know what you don't know when you begin If I've learned anything that I could sing, that I could pass along Be good and listen to your mom That track is called Listen to Your Mom, it's by Book Hunter Who, um, obviously I've not heard of them before, but uh, No, nor had I But there we go, it's what this show's about Bring a guest on, they bring new music to us, it's lovely and and it, it really is worth us um, promoting again that, that name of Safe Gigs for Women because it really is an incredible cause that they've started. And in, in just five years, you, you do see their logo at quite a lot of, I suppose in our circle, because we, we go to quite a lot of indie gigs, but as, as Mel said, they, they do want to expand and get it into other genres of music. So if, if there's anyone out there who wants to become part of that team, then then do either get in touch with us, shiraisolationgmail.com or go straight to Mel. Just Google that phrase, it will come up. Definitely, yeah. Right. Right. It's probably time for a bit of news then. Kieran, do you have any exciting news from your end? Got loads of exciting news. I'm not allowed to tell you any of it. Well, then it's not news yet. You'll just have to wait till next week. We should probably <laughs> discuss uh, what's been in the news. Uh, well, there's been two big stories, I think, in the news from, from last week. Let's start with the good one, which is about the, the vaccine trials, which have all been relatively successful. And, and it does sound like there is now a plan in place, light at the end of the tunnel and all that. But They're like buses, aren't they? How, how does that change um, your planning, Kieran? It doesn't change my planning at all because um, we still don't know how long it'll take to roll out. So you've still got a plan on the basis that everything's locked down and you're socially distanced. So we just carry on doing that until, until we're told we don't have to. Um, but there are, there are vaccines are a bit like buses, aren't they? You wait for one for ages and three turn up at once. What's that all about? Um, do, do you think the, the big guys, um, like the, the people who we've spoken to, like, like Trey Stead, who works with music and touring all over Europe, do you think she's in the same boat, like waiting? Or, um, or, I, they, they've got more long-term planning to think about, haven't they? They have. I understand that provided there is no guaranteed lockdown like Tier 3 and everybody has to shut the doors, I understand there is tours due to happen in uh, February, March next year. So Trey will be actually touring, hopefully, and working 
Um, so provided it doesn't get any worse um, and there's no, you know, further lockdowns, um, hopefully February kick off again and socially distance, but we'll, we'll start on that road back to recovery. And hopefully that will be the actual road, you know, uh, hopefully with any luck, that is it, you know, so we'll see. We will see. And for people who don't know who we're talking about when we, we talk about Trey, um, go onto our YouTube channel and look back because all of our previous episodes are there. So you can um, watch back uh, any of the interviews that we've had with anybody over well we started this back in march we've got 34 weeks worth of shows now crazy crazy isn't it that's an incredible cache of music the um the other story that i wanted to briefly touch on with you was the oasis center in swindon which is not reopening after lockdown yes actually that's a really pertinent one because just last week uh, bbc radio 6 did their annual t-shirt day old used to be called old t-shirt day and now just calling it t-shirt day uh, to celebrate any any merchandise any t-shirts you've bought by bands that you love particularly during lockdown because artists can't tour but they can still sell merch so there was an encouragement to you to buy your favorite band's t-shirt and, and look after your bands but what was really lovely is that um i chose a picture i found a really old picture of myself wearing a sleeper t-shirt but i bought that t-shirt at the oasis in swindon um, and so the very week that this is due to go ahead and have this, this national out of this national t-shirt day and all the rest of it, um, the Oasis, you know, um, announced that they're closing their doors permanently. That is it. Gone. Um, so I'm, it's pretty, it's pretty devastating for Swindon because it's, it's a sizable venue, a couple of thousand, effectively a, cad- a small academy in Swindon, although it wasn't an academy, it was a sports centre. But, but in recent years, they've had Biffy Clyro after they were famous. They had Placebo. Um, you know, these are big acts that are still playing Swindon occasionally. It's just not going to happen anymore. That's it. I was trying to think if I've actually been to a gig at Oasis, and I don't think I have. <laughs> it's a strange one because it smells like chlorine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you actually go into like the basketball like arena a bit where they host all their basketball that's actually where the gigs happen uh, so it is literally like a school sports hall it's quite strange i saw loads of gigs there i saw ash there years ago i saw ocean color scene there sleeper um, a few others so yeah it's a great venue well it's not a great venue it's a crazy venue you want to go for a swim afterwards really Right, if, uh, if anybody wants to get in touch with us, the email address is sheerisolation at gmail.com. So if you're a band and you've got a music video out or you've got some news that you want to share with us, that is the email address to get in touch with us. Um, you can find us on YouTube, on um, all kinds of streaming platforms and on the local radio network. And we're here every week. So uh, come back at the same time next week. We will be here with more guests and more music. There we go. Kieran, it has been lovely to chat to you. You look very distracted. I'm not sure why. Always a pleasure, never a trouble. Just checking my emails to see if I have an email back, um, but I haven't, so it's fine. Okay, good. As long as I'm not distracting you, that's fine. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, in a te- like a teacher in class. I'm oh, sorry, are we distracting you? Uh, yeah, it's no, not sorry, like we're doing sorry. anything important, is it? We're only recording the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Uh, speak, speak to you next week. Bye-bye. Ciao.